Welcome to the KZGN News. Today we'll bring you up to date on the high-speed rail, the vaccination bill going through Sacramento, foster parent information, and much more. From the Rademacher Hills to Bee Mountain and the mighty Sierras, Ridgecrest to Inyo Kern and China Lake, this is your news for the Indian Wells Valley with the KZGN News Crew. I'm Tom Whitnick, and here's news of interest to Ridgecrest and the Indian Wells Valley. Here's an update on the high-speed rail project. On Monday, it was reported that with another day, another issue with the high-speed rail project has surfaced. The state's bullet train project recently broke ground on the first phase of construction in January. Barely six months later, issues have boiled over and the first phase has been shortened by some eight miles. Phase one will connect Los Angeles to San Francisco through the Central Valley, with phase two fleshing out the rail network to eventually include Sacramento and San Diego. Phase one construction began in the Central Valley, north of Madera, and will eventually work its way south toward the high desert and then LA. The new problem is because of the decision as a result of a December settlement to a lawsuit brought on by Bakersfield officials disputing the effects that will, this massive undertaking will have on the immediate area. The current redirect places the Bakersfield station outside the city of neighboring Shafter, who also has pending legal action with the California High Speed Rail Authority. Bakersfield and the authority have until January 2016 to meet with effective stakeholders and redraw the route through the Bakersfield downtown area. While the section of track in question is slated for completion in 2017, the entirety of Phase 1 is not due to be completed until 2029. There is currently no timetable for Phase 2, so high-speed rail has its share of court challenges going on. In news from Sacramento, the AP is reporting that California lawmakers yesterday approved a hotly contested bill that would impose one of the strictest vaccination laws in the country. It was passed after five hours of highly emotional testimony that brought hundreds of opponents to the Capitol. SB 277 is intended to boost vaccination rates after a measles outbreak at Disneyland that sickened more than 100 in the U.S. and Mexico. The outbreak even had parents keeping their children home from school to protect them from the outbreak. It has prompted the most contentious legislative battle of the year with the thousands of opponents taken to social media and legislative hearings to protest the legislation. The Assembly Health Committee approved the legislation 12 to 6 Tuesday evening with one lawmaker abstaining, sending it to the full assembly for its final legislative hurdle. If the bill becomes law, California would join Mississippi and West Virginia as the only states with such strict requirements. The bill, sponsored by Senate Democrats, Senators, Richard Penn of Sacramento and Ben Allen of Santa Monica would only allow children with serious health problems to opt out of school-mandated vaccinations. School-aged children who remain unvaccinated would need to be homeschooled. It would apply to elementary schools, secondary schools, and daycare centers. In news about the police officer involved in that pool party event in Texas on Monday, Chief of Police Greg Conley announced Tuesday evening that Eric Casebolt, the McKinney, Texas police officer, who was caught on video pinning a teenage girl to the ground and pulling his gun on others at a pool party, has resigned from the McKinney Police Department. Caseful's lawyer said earlier on Tuesday that the officer had decided to leave the force. Connolly said that Caseful's decision to leave was voluntary and that he would continue to collect a pension and benefits. Connolly strongly condemned Caseful's action during the incident and said that the officer, who had been with the department since 2005, was out of control. As the Chief of Police, I want to say to our community that the actions of Casebolt, as seen on the video of the disturbance at the pool, are indefensible. Our policies, our training, our practice do not support his actions, he said. Conley also said on Tuesday that charges against 18-year-old Adrian Martin, the only person arrested at the pool party incident, has been dropped. Casebolt has been placed on administrative leave after the video of the incident went viral. That internal investigation has ended because Casebolt is no longer employed by the police department according to Terry Qualls, a police department spokesperson. There is an ongoing investigation to determine whether Case Bolt should face criminal charges. Now here's some news from a Northern California City Council in turmoil. Again, this isn't about our city council, but a good example as to how out of hand local politics can get. Joshua Mitchell, the mayor of the Central Valley City of Sanger, has called it quits. He said last week that he plans to resign, citing persistent conflicts with the majority on the city council. Mitchell says that the hostilities have led to threats against him and his family, including the burning of his campaign office and various acts of vandalism. Mitchell says the council members have driven out top city officials who have sparked an economic revival in the city. 
He also blames the council majority for what he calls a threatening atmosphere that has led him to move his family beyond city limits. Mitchell currently lives in a rented home within the city to avoid any residency issues. The Fresno Bee reports, Mitchell filed a letter of resignation with Sanger City Clerk Becky Hernandez on Wednesday morning and said he will not attend any more city council meetings. His resignation will become official within 30 days after he ties up loose ends, he said. He added that he has no plans to seek another higher office. Mitchell pointed to an emergency city council meeting in December that was held to discuss firing city manager Brian Haddix. Mitchell was an ardent supporter of Haddix and accused Antiveros, Cantu, and Garza of meeting illegally to discuss Haddix's removal. The council eventually voted 4-0 with Mitchell abstaining in favor of keeping Haddix. He said, when the three came together to make a decision to fire our city manager, I knew the city was headed down the wrong path, Mitchell said, and I knew there was nothing I was going to be able to do to stop it. Mitchell has been an elected Sanger official since 2010. He is also the target of an investigation by the Fair Political Practices Commission. He has dismissed the investigation as a personal attack trumped up by his political opponents. Now, aren't you glad we don't have drama like this on our city council? In local news, the China Lake section of the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics invites the public to a presentation about the Mojave Air and Spaceport. This Saturday, June 13th at 7 p.m., Stu Witt will speak at the Manorango Museum about activities going on at the Mojave Airport. Stu, and the, Air the airport's chief executive officer and general manager, has a first-hand view of the growing infrastructure that supports more than 60 companies working at the facility. Since Spaceship One made its historic flight as the world's first manned private spacecraft in 2004, Mojave Air and Spaceport has emerged as a, the leading commercial aerospace test center. More first flights and significant aerospace events have occurred here than in any other airport in the world during the last 10 years. Companies working at Mojave are engaged in everything from light industry to highly advanced aerospace design and flight testing. Stu will describe the exciting developments at the Air and Spaceport in supporting innovative companies like Scaled Composites, XCAR Aerospace, Mastin Space Systems, and Strata Launch Systems as they pioneer new frontier of commercial spaceflight. There is much innovative work going on in Mojave, says Jeff Scott, chairman of the AIAA chapter. Stu has a fascinating perspective on the development of commercial spaceflight and its importance to California. The Saturday evening event is free and open to the general public. Any questions can be sent to claiaa at yahoo.com or call Jeff Scott at 760-371-5688. The AIAA China Lake section has served professional members of the aerospace industry throughout the southern Sierra Nevada region for over 50 years. Our members were instrumental in having China Lake designated as an AIAA historic aerospace site in 2006. AIAA is the world's largest technical society dedicated to the global aerospace profession. With more than 35,000 individual members worldwide and 100 corporate members, AIAA brings together industry, academia, and government to advance engineering and science in aviation, space, and defense. For more information, visit www.aiaa.org. In news from the Kern County Department of Human Services, they are announcing training for people interested in becoming foster parents. They are presenting a foster parent orientation. The orientation will be held Thursday, June 11th or June 25th. The orientation will be held in the Kern County Human Services Office at 145 East Ridgecrest Boulevard. It will go from 5.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. This orientation is the first of four steps to become a foster parent. Call or reserve a seat at 888-632-6673. The four steps are, first, attend an orientation. Second, complete pride training. Third, submit an application and fourth, home inspection and obtain clearances. So if you're interested in becoming a foster parent, attend the orientation at 5.30 on Thursday. Again, to register, call 888-632-6673. Now here's news from a graffiti problem just south of us. We have the PAC volunteers to thank for making sure we don't have these problems here. In news from the Kern County Sheriff's Office, they have reported that between May 29th and June 8th, 2015, Deputies from the Rosamond substation investigated several incidents of vandalism on buildings and structures in the Rosamond area. 
During the investigation, deputies learned that numerous businesses, including an Albertson store, Rosamond High School, a Fast Strip store, the Wayside Cafe, Hoffman's Antiques, the Desert Oasis Mobile Home Park, an advertising billboard, and several neighborhood walls had been tagged. The estimate in damage incurred was several thousand dollars. While investigating the incidents of vandalism, deputies were able to obtain information which led them to identify a suspect, 19-year-old Edgar Seguero of Rosamond. Based on information and evidence developed during the investigation, deputies arrested Seguero at his home on June 8th for eight counts of felony vandalism. The investigation is ongoing. If anyone has information on this case, they are asked to call the Rosamond substation at 661-256-9700 or the Sheriff's Office at 661-861-3110. Again, a big thank goes out to Lou from PACT for diligent getting a graffiti removed here almost as fast as it goes up. If anyone sees graffiti here, call the Ridgecrest Police Department to report it. Here's more news from Chief Strand of the Ridgecrest Police Department. He's announcing a 2015 Citizens Police Academy. The Ridgecrest Police Department is currently accepting applications for the 2015 Citizens Police Academy. The Citizens Police Academy is a nine-week program designed to give members of the community an inside look at local law enforcement. During the academy, students will be introduced to a variety of topics to give them an overview of the Ridgecrest Police Department's function and operational procedures. Graduates from the academy are encouraged to continue their involvement with the police department by becoming one of our volunteers in Police and Community Together, PACT, and or the Community Emergency Response Team, CERT. Participants in the Citizens Police Academy are selected by the Chief of Police through an application process. Enrollment is limited to 20 students. Potential candidates must meet the following eligibility requirements. They must be a minimum of 18 years of age, must live or work in the Indian Wells Valley, must have no felony convictions, must have had no serious misdemeanor convictions in the last five years. The Citizens Police Academy application and information are available at the Ridgecrest Police Department, 100 West California Avenue, Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. You can also email Sergeant Ryan Maroney for an application. Applications will be accepted until Friday, June 26. Classes begin on Thursday, August 6, from 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Graduation from the Academy will be held Thursday, October 1, 2015. The Citizen Police Academy is a great way to learn about your community, meet people, and get to know the men and women of your police department. To learn more about the Academy, please leave a message for Sergeant Ryan Maroney, Ridgecrest Police Department at 760-499-5143 or email him at rmaroney at ridgecrest-ca.gov. Now in case the GN's continuous effort to provide news and information you've asked for, here are today's local gas prices for your information. Well, since Monday, prices locally and abroad have gone down a little more. As of this morning, Ridgecrest is ranging from 344 to 389. Lancaster's from 349 to 389, the LA Valley area is 349 to 369, and the Bishop area 371 to 383. We have one station coming in at the 344 figure and four stations at the 345 figure. Ridgecrest is still the cheapest price compared to all the other areas we monitor. Tune in with us Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays for updates. We at KZGN always suggest you shop locally and fill up here to support our local economy. Remember, when you pay sales tax out of town, you're helping those cities pave their streets instead of here. Stay tuned for weather and sports when we come back. Thanks for staying with us. Let's go to Keith for the weather. Thank you, Tom. The National Weather Service is forecasting a risk of severe thunderstorms from the central plains across the Mississippi and Ohio valleys and into the eastern Great Lakes region. Temperatures across the nation, Massachusetts 80 degrees, Carolinas came in at 84, Ohio 89, Kansas 90, Texas 87, Colorado 66, New Mexico 79, Arizona 85, 74 in Idaho, 65 in San Francisco, and 68 in Los Angeles. For us here on IWV, tonight we still have a 20% chance of showers and thunderstorms possible, otherwise partly cloudy with a low around 67. West wind, 15 to 20 miles per hour with gusts as high as 30. Thursday will be mostly sunny with a high near 97. West-southwest wind, 5 miles per hour. Thursday night, partly cloudy with a low around 71. West wind, 5 miles per hour. 
Friday will be mostly sunny and hot with a high near 101 north northeast wind 5 miles per hour. Friday night will be partly cloudy with a low around 71 northeast wind 10 miles per hour. Saturday will be sunny and hot with a high of 104 west wind 10 miles per hour. Saturday night mostly clear with a low around 70 west southwest wind 10 miles per hour. And on Sunday, sunny and hot with a high near 103, west northwest wind, 5 to 10 miles per hour. And that is a look at your IWV forecast. Now back to Tom and the rest of your KZGN news. Thanks, Keith. Let's go to Tom Heck for sports. And a very pleasant Wednesday afternoon to everyone. And let's start with the NBA last night. Golden State, who was down by 21 points in the end of the third quarter, came back and made a good stand, but came up a buck short. They lose 96 to 91 to Cleveland in Cleveland. Now, Stephon Curry only had five points in the first half, really didn't do much at all until the fourth quarter, and then he started to play like the MVP that he is. Ends up with 27 points, had a couple of big threes at the end to make it very, very close, but the Cavaliers, thanks to LeBron James, 40 points, and Matthew Delladova, 21 points, defeat Golden State. The series now is two games to one in favor of Cleveland. Game four tomorrow night, Thursday night, in Cleveland. Teams will come back out and play Sunday in Oakland for game number five. All right, Major League Baseball scoreboard. Kansas City over Minnesota, two to nothing. Those two teams battling for first place in the American League Central. We're going to put up the standings for the American League here in just a sec. Baltimore over Boston, one to nothing last night. Orioles starting to roll again. Detroit shuts out the Cubs. The Tigers had lost eight games in a row, and now they've won four games in a row. They're going to get Justin Verlander back on Saturday. He will pitch in Cleveland. It'll be his first start of the season. He's been on rehab the entire start of the season. All right, the Yankees win again. They beat Washington 6-1. to Boy, Washington has really fallen apart after having a great last month. And then Milwaukee over Pittsburgh 4-1. to Houston does it again. The Astros lose their sixth game in a row. They lose 4-2 to two to Chicago in Chicago. The Astros that got off to such a great start, the talk of the league, are, is now only eight games over 500. The Astros have a four-game lead over the Angels and a two-game lead over the Texas Rangers. Okay, let's talk about the Toronto Blue Jays. The Toronto Blue Jays, who had lost eight in a row, now have won seven in a row. They beat Miami 4-3 to three up in Canada last night. Atlanta wins again. They beat San Diego. And Seattle, who is six games under 500, defeats Cleveland 3-2. to two. And you can look at the standings right now in the American League. Look at the Central. The Royals and the Twins battling it out. Those two teams playing tonight. The Tigers playing a lot better now after losing eight games in a row. You look at the East, the Yankees off to a good start, eight games over 500. Then you've got Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay lost last night to the Angels by a score of 8-2. to two. Those teams play again tonight in Florida. And the Blue Jays now are 30-30 and 30 after losing eight games in a row, but now starting to play better baseball. Out west, the Astros, Rangers, and Angels all together. And then Seattle bringing up the fourth place. Seattle, though, has pitching that really, if they start hitting the baseball, they could make some noise in the American League West. All right. WNBA, Women's National Basketball Association. Tulsa beat Seattle last night. And the College World Series gets underway this weekend from Omaha. The eight-team tournament, it's a double elimination. Cal State Fullerton will be there this year. Their 17th trip. They've been a Division I program for 40 years, a campus in Fullerton. And they will take on Vanderbilt in the first round. Florida will battle Miami. That'll be another really good first round game. We'll see what happens there. That's your sports for this Wednesday. I'm Tom Heck for KZGN. So that's the news for today. All of us at KZGN TV know you have a choice in what you watch for your news. We all thank you for choosing us, KZGN TV, Rich Chris's only locally owned community TV station. Now stay with us for a short video of a very smart bird. There you go. Here's my lovebird. She doesn't really like her shorter tail, so she's just trying to help herself 
cutting a piece of paper, shredding, shredding it out just like a real shredder. I'm trying to make a long tail. As you can see, some papers are really long, just like our regular parrots. There you go, another one coming up. She's tucking into her tail. That's good. Looks good though. But not a green tail, but white tail. Oh. Alright, keep going, keep going. Let me see your face. Oh, by the way, her name is BB. And she loves shredding papers. There you go. As you can see, she's looking good with a longer tail. Mm. She got another paper tucking into her tail. That's done perfectly, as you can see. Tail is pretty long now. Alright. Uh, one more. Yeah, one more coming up. Nicely cut, shredded, and 